Apple's Lightning is the proprietary charging and data interface found on the iPhone and some other Apple devices. Most people probably only know it from charging their phone, transferring files, or connecting their wired headphones to the iPhone. However, Lightning can do much more, including some very cool hardware hacking related things. For example, you can buy these DCSD cables online that give you, via Lightning, access to the serial console of the iPhone. There are also a couple of cables you can find online that give you access to JTAG, the processor debugging interface on the iPhone. For example, the famous Kansi cable. This makes it possible to do some really cool low-level security research. In this series, we will investigate the technical details of Lightning. In today's video, we will start by looking at the way Lightning communicates with the cable. What actually happens when you plug in a Lightning cable into your iPhone? In the next videos, we will then look at re-implementing the Lightning protocol on our own, eventually ending up with a homemade iPhone JTAG cable. Now, you might assume that a Lightning cable is just a simple passive cable. It has a Lightning connector on one end, a bit of wire, and then a USB connector on the other end. However, in reality, a simple Lightning cable is much more complex. I have dissolved the Lightning connector of an old broken cable in acetone, and if we look at the connector after removing some metal shielding, we can see that there's much more in here than just a bit of wire. There's a tiny PCB behind the connector, with a couple of chips, capacitors, and so on. So let's start figuring out what this chip actually does. To start, let's look at the Lightning connector itself. The Lightning connector is famously reversible and has 8 contacts on each side. However, if we remove all the lint that always gets stuck in the Lightning port, we can see that there are only contacts on one side, and so we already know that Lightning only uses 8 of the 16 contacts. So let's take a look at what happens on the electrical level when we plug in a Lightning USB cable into an iPhone. I've cut apart a Lightning extension cable, soldered on some jumper wires, and connected the logic analyzer to the plug. This allows us to see what happens when we just plug a lightning cable into the iPhone without anything connected to it. Let's hit record on the logic analyzer, plug in the lightning cable into the iPhone, and we can see some signals. Well, two. And if we zoom in on the signals and check the different parts, it looks like it's the same signal alternating over and over on both lines. As we have nothing else connected, it looks like this might be the signal that the iPhone uses to poll whether something has been connected to the iPhone. Before we go any further and connect an actual peripheral to the lightning port, let's have a deeper look at the signal. If we look at the repeating signal, we can note that it contains four larger pauses. Maybe these are some kind of separators, for example between single bytes. Let's zoom in on one of these blocks. I've intentionally selected one of the center ones, as it makes it more likely we are not looking at a prologue or epilogue of the signal. Now, when staring at this, we can notice that this block has 8 valleys in the signal with two different lengths, and maybe these two lengths indicate whether a 0 or 1 is transmitted. This could make sense, as with 8 of these, we would have just enough bits to form a byte. One problem though, we do not know what's a 1 or what's a 0, and we also don't know the bit order. There are a couple of ways we can go from here, but it's likely that Apple did not fully reinvent the wheel when designing Lightning, and so probably this is some kind of well-known protocol. So why not just ask ChatGPT? So let's ask it, which embedded single wire buses exist that encode bits with different lengths of low and high signals? And it helpfully suggests, one such bus is the one wire bus developed by Dallas Semiconductor. It uses a single wire to communicate data by encoding a bit as a specific duration of low and high signals. So let's check out the Wikipedia article on one wire, skip over all the blah blah and look for a signal diagram. And here we are. This looks very familiar. Ones are encoded as a short low pulse and a long high pulse, and zeros are encoded as a long low pulse and a short high pulse. This looks just like our signal. Awesome, this is it. Thanks ChatGPT. The timing of our signal is a bit different, but we can use the information from the Wikipedia article as a good first assumption on encoding and bit order. So let's go back to our signal and let's try to decode it by hand. We ignore the first part as it seems to be a start bit or something along those lines and look at the first block after it. We can annotate the bits here with what we saw in Wikipedia. Zeros are when the signal is mostly low and ones are when the signal is mostly high. Let's also do the same with the other three blocks. Now according to Wikipedia, the least significant bit comes first, so we can now go ahead and convert the signal into hex and we end up with 4 bytes. Hex 74000021F. Now, equipped with this knowledge, we can write our own logic analyzer plugin. This would make analysis much easier. But obviously we are not the first ones looking at Lightning, and so there are quite some resources around it already. In fact, I wrote a logic analyzer plugin for the Lightning bus a couple of years ago. It's called SDQ Analyzer and available on GitHub, and so let's just use that one. And if we load it into the logic analyzer and configure it correctly, we can see that we now get the signal nicely annotated. Time to analyze further. Let's repeat the logic recording, but this time with a real lightning cable connected to a computer. 
To do that, I'm adding the other half of the lightning extension to our setup, with the logic analyzer in the middle to sniff the signals. So let's again hit record, connect the cable, and there's a lot more going on here. The first thing to notice is that the regular polling is gone. Instead, if we zoom in and remember our previous analysis of the polling signal, we can see that the first part is the same, 740001F. But now there's a lot more data behind it. So it looks like the cable responded to that weird polling signal. And thanks to our logic analyzer, we can even see the bytes, hex 751009 and so on and so forth. But there's a lot more going on here. A lot of different messages via that one wire bus. And we can also see that two other lines become active. Channel one and channel two have this weird differential signal going on. And you might recognize it. This is a high speed USB signal. We can see the voltage is somewhere around 400 millivolts, which is the signal level for USB. So is all that lightning communication necessary just to get USB activated? Now zooming back in onto the initial signal, we can also see a short pause between the data from the phone and the response of the cable. This lets us figure out which part of the signal is coming from the phone and which part is coming from the cable. The logic analyzer plugin already knows about this and so it put a small square there. Now, by just staring at this answer, we will probably not be able to figure out what exactly is going on here. But one thing we can notice. The first byte sent by the iPhone is hex 74, while the answer begins with hex 75. Let's look at the next transmission. Here we get hex 704000A6 sent from the iPhone and hex 7193 answered by the cable. Again, the first byte of the data sent by the iPhone is just increased by one in the response. And in the next block it's the same, hex 76 sent by the iPhone and the response begins with hex 77. And here the same, hex 90 from the phone, 91 replied by the cable. This makes it likely that the first byte sent by the phone indicates the type of command or request, while the first byte returned from the cable is the indication that it's the answer to the previous request. Also, if we list some of the requests, most data seems pretty low entropy. The command or request at the beginning, lots of zeros, but the last byte is always seemingly random. If you have looked at embedded protocols before, you can probably already guess what this might be. A checksum. A checksum is used to check whether the data was correctly received. And the most common type of checksum is CRC, the cyclic redundancy check. However, there are a lot of different CRC polynomes, and so while we know the size, 1 byte or 8 bits, there are still a lot of different CRCs that this could potentially be. Luckily for us, CRCs are relatively easy to reverse engineer, and using a tool called Refang, we can do it in a couple of seconds. We just tell Refang the size of the CRC we are looking for, in our case 8 bits, and provide it with a couple of samples. I've just copied in a couple of the requests we saw in the logic analyzer. And if we hit return, we indeed get two CRC polynomes that match the signal. Perfect. With this, we are able to create CRCs for when we want to send our own messages. We will need this when we start building our own lightning implementation. Now with the logic analyzer, we can also decode all data at once as a string. And there are a couple of interesting things in here. Over here, there's a string saying Apple Inc. So this might indicate the manufacturer of the lightning accessory. Over here, it says USB-C to lightning cable, which it indeed is. And over here is a weird string, and if you look very closely at your lightning cable, it actually has a serial number printed on it, and this is exactly that serial number. Using this information, we can infer the meaning of some of the commands. For example, this request, hex8000, causes the cable to respond with 81 Apple Inc., so it might be a get manufacturer command. We can also notice that the cable responds with a 31 byte string, and the hex 1f in the request happens to be 31 in decimal. So this might be the length of the response the iPhone expects. And this request here, 8001, causes the cable to reply with 82249, which happens to be the model number of the cable. And 8002 causes the cable to respond with USB-C to lightning cable 1 meter. So just by staring at the logic analyzer output, we were able to already determine the meaning of some commands. Awesome. To summarize, we figured out the communication protocol between the chip in the cable and the iPhone which by the way is commonly referred to as SDQ or IDBus, and I've linked a couple of resources about it in the description. We've also reverse engineered the CRC8 checksum used in Lightning, and we were even already able to figure out the meaning of some of the Lightning commands. In the next video, we will start building our own Lightning cable and program a microcontroller to act as if it was the chip integrated in the Lightning cable. I hope you enjoyed this video and to see you on this channel again soon. Thank you.